Cities, by their very nature as dense population centers, have limited land available. Because of this, cities need to use their precious land wisely. Usually, land is used relatively well, but sometimes, valuable land is wasted on extremely inefficient infrastructure or other wasteful uses. In this video, we'll take a look at an example of bad land use in my home city of Prague, Czech Republic. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Yes, I know it's technically not a freeway, however... Look at it, come on. This is the Severijni Magistrala in Prague. It is a wide, 4-8 to eight lane road cutting straight through the center of Prague. This results in beautiful sights, like the National Museum being flanked by a wide, noisy road on both sides. Or what about the historical streets of the new town, founded by King Charles IV in the 14th century? You guessed it, the six-lane road runs straight through the district. Another gorgeous site created by this road is the Prague Main Train Station building, a beautiful historical Art Nouveau building, which has a six-lane road rammed straight in front of it, with a parking lot as well. However, it wasn't always this way. From the construction of the train station from 1869 to 1871, up to the mid to late 20th century, the main train station, back then called Franz Joseph I train station, later Wilson train station, honoring the late US President Woodrow Wilson, had a tram line running directly in front of it, as well as a pleasant park. As of now, in August 2024, the tram line directly in front of the station has been torn up and placed about a 5 minute walk away and the park has become a place infamous for drunkards, homeless people and drugs, especially at night. Combined with all of that, traffic on the road also causes lots of air and noise pollution. It's not a coincidence that according to measurements of particulate matter in the air, the dirtiest air is along the streets of Ječna and Sokolska, which are home to wide, busy roads. These streets are also far from calm and quiet. Here's some footage filmed just in front of the state opera, located right here. Yeah, not exactly a sanctuary of calm and quiet. Speaking of the state opera, let's say that you go there for a show, and then you want to go to the main train station to catch a train home. Your options are taking a massive detour, crossing a three-lane road and walking along that road on a relatively narrow sidewalk. Alternatively, you could run straight across this four-lane road, hope that you won't die and walk to the train station through the aforementioned park. And lastly, you could go through this underpass, which looks like you're gonna get killed here at night. There, you can cross the road and go through the aforementioned park, or you could continue through underpasses straight to the train station. If you choose option 2, you'll get to experience more perfect mugging opportunities at night, and also things like this. All options aren't exactly great, if you ask me. In my opinion, a six-lane road ran straight through the city center, going in front of the main train station, among others, has no place in a 21st century city. However, the Prague City Hall is mostly controlled by car brains, and so, I'm not holding out hope for any positive change anytime soon. The only progress we're getting is getting trams back onto the top half of Wenceslas Square, so at least there's that. Now, that's all well and good, but one may ask, so what? The road gets people to where they want to go. Another problem I have with this road is its sheer inefficiency. According to the corporation that manages Prague's roads, 142,000 cars use the road each day, on average. With the average vehicle occupancy rate being 1.3, meaning that on average, 1.3 people are traveling in one car, this means that on average, the Magistrala moves 184,600 people each day. This comes at the cost of making a large part of the city noisy, its air polluted, and its streets less pedestrian and cyclist friendly. In comparison, the C Metro line, which runs along a part of the road, can carry up to 645,000 people per day. This is the line's peak capacity, which would assume packed trains 24-7, which is unrealistic. However, even if the trains were only half full, it would carry way, way more people than the road ever could. All this doesn't even require a huge road to be jammed straight through the city. It doesn't affect the air quality, it promotes walkability, etc. However, this isn't the full story. 
I doubt people take the road when going from, let's say, here to here, because due to traffic and the availability of public transport, it would only be slightly faster or maybe even slower to drive. They would take it going from, for example, here to here, where public transport is less available and efficient. The thought process would be, I need to transfer two times to get to my destination and I would get there 40 minutes slower, screw it, I'll drive instead. To be able to truly transform the Magistrala to a normal, fit for the 21st century urban avenue, public transport availability and frequency, especially around the edges of the city, need to be improved to provide an appropriate replacement for the local residents. One proposed measure was a 200 Czech crown or about 8 euro congestion charge for driving into the city center for non-residents. This wouldn't affect the Magistrala, which would stay toll-free. This measure was pushed by Zdeněk Hřib, the deputy mayor for transportation of Prague to reduce traffic in the city center and to raise money for public transport and other city expenses. However, the majority of people and other districts of the city have voiced their disagreements with this scheme, saying that it's extortion, that the world is collapsing and that the traffic will just reroute around the center. However, I'd say that these concerns are misplaced. Many other cities around the world have implemented congestion charges ultra-low emission zones and others, and nowhere did it lead to increased traffic and worsen quality of life. For example, in London, England, there are two main zones, the ultra-low emission zone, which requires drivers of especially polluting cars to pay a fee of £12.5 or €14.67 to enter most parts of London. The second is the congestion charge, which requires all drivers to pay a £15 or 17.6 euro fee to enter central London between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. on workdays and 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. on weekends and bank holidays. People complained, as they do, but in the end, it resulted in billions of pounds being raised for public transport and road maintenance and to an 18% traffic reduction in central London. You might wonder, why do you and other people in the urbanist community care so much about cars? Here's why. The thing about driving a car in the city is this, you are not entitled to drive on free roads, park your car on public property for free, pump your car with subsidized gas, etc. Driving a two-ton vehicle alone or with one other person into the city isn't some god-given right. What some drivers seem to fail to realize is that they are not alone in the city. Everyone's actions, decisions, etc. have an impact on other residents of the city. While driving a car into the city, your car probably lets out polluting exhaust fumes and tire particles from braking. It takes up valuable space when parked, creates a quite high risk of dangerous and sometimes fatal crashes compared to other modes of travel, and more. My point is this, drivers don't seem to realize the sheer cost society has to shoulder to allow driving within city limits. In my opinion, for choosing to drive a two-ton climate control, fast-moving box, car drivers shouldn't be as subsidized as they are now. Car infrastructure is subsidized through the taxes all of us pay, except if you're a billionaire, of course. In that case, taxes obviously don't apply to you. I'm making the case that our taxes should be used more efficiently, because this level of subsidies to cars is simply way too inefficient, and the air, noise and water pollution shouldn't be unnecessarily subsidized. Ultimately, the choice of promoting car travel compared to public transport, walking and cycling is an indictment of the priorities of the city, region and country. We can either promote socially inclusive, safer and cleaner methods of travel or we can stay in the past, forcing everyone into hyper-individualistic, polluting, inefficient transport methods. The choice is ours. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with three membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits, like early access to my videos. There are also affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's Last Brain Cell and Aero Martian for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time, bye! As of now, in August 2024, the tramline directly uh, come on. can carry up to 600... Seriously? <laughs> this measure was pushed by Zdeněk Hřib. The dip... Bro, come on. Words. 
Yes.